five, four, three, two, one. What the fuck? Happened. I don't know. <laughs> Whoa, Gaff Scott, what's going on? It's this here. Bloody YouTube. Shut up, YouTube. Holy shit. Hello, Willkommen, Bienvenue, Konnichiwa. Uh, everything's okay, situation normal. It's time for the Amish Inquisition yet again, episode 188 on Sunday the 13th of June. I'm Amish Phil. I'm Amish Ben. And I'm Amish Matt. The dwarf, the cripple, and the mother of madness. No guests tonight. Don't know what's happened. No. I think maybe too many Sherberts watching England destroy Croatia this afternoon. Destroy them 1 0. <laughs> yeah. Did you the watch football. it? Did you watch the football? Uh... Get off your phone, for fuck's sake. <laughs> We're doing a podcast. Yeah, no, but we've got no guests, so. Well, I'm just uh, talking. Oh, I'm talking what? to you. So rude. Yeah. Looking for inspiration now. <laughs> Did you watch the football? Was the question. I got like five, I got five minutes of it, but I was um, I was otherwise occupied in the back garden. That's why I'm not live in the studio this evening. And burning, oh, yeah. burning the candle at both ends. Oh, what are you doing in the garden? Loads of stuff. I found an ant's nest in the next door neighbor's uh, bag of soil. They've been kill, there. Kill it with fire. Um, no, I just got my wife to shovel it out and gently place it in a bed. Did you not pour plaster of Paris down it and then create a modern art sculpture of all the the weaving tunnels? Like Pompeii, Ben. Yeah, for, for the ants. Yeah, that's what I mean. So you <laughs> kind of saying I should have killed all the ants. And the baby egg sacks that I described to you earlier. Uh, yeah, yeah, kind of, man. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, and then we did that. And then um, I'm not sure what I've been building downstairs, whether it's uh, a pagoda or a pergola. I think it's a pergola. Um, and I say I have. Isn't that I've... a thing you'd brew coffee in? Um, possibly. <laughs> um, and... Then I've laid a lawn in the bottom bit of the garden. I've moved, I say I, me and my wife, but mainly me. Um, I've moved, there was six tons of soil down there. Oof. And then the top garden was three tons. Um, and then rolled out loads of grass because the, the grass man um, brought too much grass. You know, you have to water that lawn you've, you've laid very, very muchly. <laughs> Day and night, mm. both. <laughs> so that's four times because I've got two lawns. So I'll sprinkler at the bottom in the morning, sprinkler in the top in the morning, and a sprinkler at the bottom in the evening, and a sprinkler uh, at the top in the evening. Have you got them on timers? Uh, no. So I have to manually go down there. And... It's like feeding newborn chicks. <laughs> Although there was a there was a blackbird having. <laughs> Having a uh, a bath in it this morning that was quite nice. So I'm glad that somebody's um, uh, get off my lawn. Getting having some fun out of it. What's wrong with the old lawn? Uh, there was no grass. There was no grass to be had in our back garden. Was there? All. Oh right, it's flagged, weren't it? Yeah. So at the bottom it was flagged, but the trees had made, moved them. So I don't think it had been touched in like 40 years. So I've removed 140 concrete flags from oh, the bottom shit. of the garden and then a man a man came a real man a real man yeah he fucking he was so strong and he um <laughs> they were so heavy they were only, they were like two foot by two foot concrete slabs and he 600 mil millennials yeah he um took um a hundred and we kept about <laughs> 10 so he took a hundred and thirty concrete flags in the back of his niche not in one go obviously in his nissan <laughs> kashkai 
I wow, think he, oh. I think he took like I can't remember if he, I figured it out. I think he took ten at a time. So it was a, uh, it was pretty fucking. It, it took him three days. <laughs> what was it, Gumtree or something? Did you put it on Gumtree? Uh, like I think Facebook Marketplace and my my wife's phone lit up. Just free, freebies. Yeah, free, free. Yeah, like with so many people. Like this guy said, I'll have them all. And he came and said, right. So you have to give people an ultimatum. Came on a motorbike. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> said, if you're not here by 10 o'clock tomorrow, I'm going to go and sit next person. But like, she, I think she still had people messaging you up to about um, a week ago. People love free shit. Yeah. Were they, uh, what is the purpose, do you think? For him, he, did he have a, a hole to fill? <laughs> he said that he had caravans. He had a caravan park or something. Oh, he'll oh, be right. laying uh, pitches, won't he? Yeah, so the, it was just for putting caravans on. Oh, wow. Um, so I, th- I think he kept some slaves. In he kept slaves? Yeah, modern-day slaves in caravans. Oh, Jesus Christ. Salad gardener. What? A salad gardener. Is it, what's so that you mean? have your seasonal workers to pick the radishes and things. Oh, right, okay. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, that's all coming to an end. Wages are going up. There's a yeah. shortage of labor. Who'd have thought it? If you cut off this supply of really cheap labor from overseas, suddenly wages would start going up and there'd be demand. Yeah. Amazing. But I don't want to pay um, four pounds for a strawberry. <laughs> Do you not like buy like fair trade coffee and stuff? Only because that's the only stuff that's there. And oh, I've nice. got some. <laughs> that reminds me the of... packet looks nice. Oh, what well, reminds you? Sorry, uh, I've got some coffee. Uh, who wants ground and not beans? Oh, I, I'm the groundman. Unless Phil can have it, because yeah, I, I, I didn't have it last time. I can take my machine can take either. Can you, right? I'll, I'll, you're yeah. here, so but, uh, you can have it. No, it's all right. So if, I prefer beans. Oh, <laughs> I prefer bean to cup. Oh, I've got it. There's a, a market difference. Oh, you don't get the husk. You probably do. I don't know. It ran well, out of beans the other day. I just. <laughs> 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 oh, no. Not good, not good for the machine. Got to keep the beans full. Put some um, marbles in it. <laughs> <coughs> I had some bad coffee. I've got some bad coffee that I'm having to drink at the moment. Like bad some... as in good, as in like cool, no. audacious, radical. No, bad as in bad, like 1970s bad. Oh, man. Um, and it just, it, it just doesn't taste of anything. Compared to that, your stuff from Asda, the Ethiopian Mokachika Chiku or whatever it was that you gave me. That was yeah. lovely. Was it? All right, that was it. Mm. I don't know what how I, that came into my possession. And it I must have been wife. before. It must have been from before Christmas. <gasps> when uh, I got. Oh, no, before February when I upgraded to the coffee machine. Yeah. I'm guessing. I've, uh, I've got a bone to pick with you, Amish Matt. Oh. Um, it's uh, about last week. All right. You know when we were talking about um, Samuel L. Jackson movies. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Here's a clip. Fellas is in there. You know he's in it in the film for like three minutes. Of course he's the hold up. He holds up the uh, hamburger place, doesn't he? That's Pulp Fiction. <laughs> oh yeah. No. <laughs> that was number one. <laughs> No, no, no. He starts off as the cleaning boy. And, uh, yeah, McDonald's. What? And then, uh, yeah, his, his, uh, his girlfriend's dad owns the burger joint. In Goodfellas? <laughs> Are, you talking- uh-huh. <laughs> Are you making a joke? <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of Akeem, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you massive racist. <laughs> Massive racist. <laughs> oh. And there was something going on in my head. I, I wasn't being a massive racist just for the fun of it. Okay. Do you know what the link is? There is a scene in Coming to America. Akeem um, falls for the daughter of the owner of the burger joint, McDowell's. Yeah. With the Golden Arches. Yeah. And there is a, um armed robbery of the burger joint, which oh, Akeem, uh, he uses his mop. And disarms the uh, the armed robber. Yeah, and you know who plays the armed robber? Oh. Samuel Jackson. Bingo! Wow. Yeah. 
Somewhere that was in the mind palace somewhere. That's that's amazing. Yeah. 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 You need to apologize, Matthew. I think so. I apologize. Um, I've got a little correction. Bodrum. The modern city of Bodrum in Turkey. Right. It was blogging my head. What was the ancient name? Halicarnassus. Halicarnassus. Yeah, Herodotus. Birthplace of Herodotus. Herodotus from Halicarnassus. Oh. So if you hear Bodrum, you know that's uh, what it refers to. We do now. Yeah. Ancient Anatolian city. It's funny how they always build on top. Often Mm -hmm. build on top of... uh, Existing civilization. Yeah. It's weird, isn't it? That what, what do you think they do? Do you think they just push everything over and then like bury it and then build on it? Foundations are laid, aren't they? You only have to lay them <laughs> once. Just raise everything to the ground, mm. salt the earth, start again. A lot of it's conquest, mm. particularly when it comes to religious buildings. Mm. So, uh, you know, uh, Particularly, so for example, in North America with the the conquistadors, mm. they would build Christian churches on top of the Native American temples. Same with the Mohammedan expansion. Mm. You know the uh, the mosque. What's it called? Bloody hell! On the Temple Mount, Jerusalem. Yeah, the 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 big mosque. That was gone. The, the dome. The dome of the rock. Dome of the Rock. So the Dome of the Rock is built on the foundations of uh, the Jewish temple. Mm. Yeah, it's a part of the conquest, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Is yeah. it just to remind any stragglers from the previous civilization that this is your new god now? Yeah, it seems to be. There's, a, mm. yeah, it's sort of a there's a supremacy element to it, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Why haven't we built anything on top of the pyramid? <laughs> <laughs> Why haven't pushed them over? <laughs> so it's just. As far as volume goes, Pyramid at Giza's biggest, biggest fucking thing ever built. I think it was the tallest building up until possibly the 20th century. Wow. Yeah, I think I've heard that. I think it might have been like the Sears Tower or the Empire State Building, some, you know, or one in I, Chicago Eiffel or something. Tower. Possibly, possibly the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. I'm reading a book. I just started a book by, it's called Sir Alan Gardner. He's, um, um, famous Egyptologist, mm. no longer with us, mm. called uh, Egypt of the Pharaohs. Mm. I've just started. And that was written in the 60s, I think 1960, 1961. Mm. And it's quite striking, it, even though I'm only maybe a quarter of the way through it, how often um, he underlines how shaky our timeline is mm. and our understanding and our names for people and the way things are attributed is quite striking. That's been the, the sort of the main thing I've sort of learned from this book. So do because you, think, you, you speak to Edith Bichelzis and it seems like this is all secure, the, safe, yeah. common knowledge. That's what I was going to say. So do you think there's more, is the word hubris around now? I don't know. I don't, I don't think, I don't think it's, hu- not, no, because I think hubris is generally intentional, isn't it? Yeah. To be hubristic. And I don't, you know, we spoke to an excellent Egyptologist. Mm. I think he's absolutely confident in, uh, in, but, but it, a lot of it's received knowledge, you see. Mm. Mm. And uh, I don't know. I think there are questions, there's certainly question marks over a, a lot of it, it seems. But who knows? Who knows how many sort of, uh, how things have developed in the intervening 60 years since it was written? I, but, you know, I don't seem to think that they find, often finding sort of game-changing stuff in Egypt, are they? No. As far as, you know, papyrus and... They need to um, open up that tomb below the Sphinx, don't they? Underneath its paw. Yeah, some people think there's something there, don't they? Yeah. Some sort of recess or chamber. Well, so not, we've, not we've stopped... It, have we stopped digging around there out of respect for an ancient civilization or is it just preservation or, or what? Because that's, 
I would have thought that the best thing to do would be to carry on digging, carry on looking, you know, in, increase that knowledge. I think the pro process has been slowed down greatly and possibly with good reason. You know, in the sort of boom, <laughs> yeah, mummies, yeah, <laughs> on the Scorpion King coming out, do we? <laughs> uh, um, in the sort of the heyday, the booming nineteenth-century archaeology boom that there was, I think a lot of damage was done, right? And archaeology has become far more sophisticated in the intervening years. But you also get this bureaucracy and everything else attached with it. You've got to grease the right palms as far as, you know, the Edda of Egyptian antiquities are concerned, and there'll be all sorts of permits and... Play the game. Yeah. Tape. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so I can't remember the name. There's a famous archaeologist. Eric, when we spoke to Eric Klein, he mentioned him. I think he was a German. And he was sort of famous for being haphazard in this way and yeah. often finding things by accident. <laughs> and uh, or coming to the right conclusion, but completely from the using the wrong methods, you know. Mm. Schle Schlieffen, Schlieffen, Schle Schlieffman, I want to say, you know. So I don't know. You, yeah. How much is going to be left after, you know, 5,000 years of our civilization? <laughs> Not a lot. No. Microplastic, mm. microplastic layer in the uh, in the fossil record, like the black mat, yeah, from the younger dryas. But it'd be more like a a playground mat, <laughs> <laughs> recycled bottles and stuff, chewing gum, probably. Yeah, probably. Yeah, chewing gum, cigarette butts for six inches in the, in the fossil record. Yeah, just like a children's playground. Mm. I don't know what to do. Should we do some housekeeping? Yeah, I know. And then do some COVID news. Yes. Yeah. Have I made the COVID news? Have you made it all? Well, no, I, I, I think I contributed something this week. Uh, yeah. Yes. I'm sure you did. Housekeeping. Housekeeping. I'm literally a communist. Cut out. Great. Yes, this is a value for value podcast. If you find this podcast valuable, please consider returning some value. How would you do this? You could buy some merch from the Amish loot chest. Yeah, link in the description as always. We could do with some new merch, some new ideas. What about beer can uh, holder, cooler holders? I've seen them. I've never used one. <laughs> I don't think Teespring offer those. About cigarette lighters. It's niche now. It's. <laughs> <coughs> I was thinking more designs rather than products. Right. I haven't could... had any new designs Science. on there for a while. There's a few on the cutting room floor. Is there? Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll resurrect some. Yeah, you can have a look at him. Right. Or well, if you have any ideas for any eavesdroppers, let us know. Mm. Do you see I started a Discord server this week? Yes. No. That's modern. It is modern, yeah. I don't really know what I'm doing. But uh, maybe I should put the link in the show notes for that as well, if anyone like, wants to come. Like chat rooms used to be. I think it is like an internet message board, isn't right. it? And it's sort of categorised. So there's like a different threads, for different things. So is it more like Reddit? Then? Yeah, I guess yes. so, yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. So there's a way for people to send us videos and uh, news clips. No, that's cool. Or there's a general chat. Or there's different categories, like there's esoteric thread and the COVID thread. And I've uh, invited a few people have come in just to see, to sort of test it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it seems to work. I don't oh. know. It seems like most podcasts have a Discord channel now. Right, okay. So... It's a way of getting in touch with your um, listeners, I suppose. Another way. Yeah. Yeah. I'll put the link in the description then. Hmm. If you want to hop into the Discord server. Um, subscribe to the YouTube channel and the Odyssey channel. Hmm. Throw some crypto. 
Word of mouth is a good way of uh, letting people know. Come tell everyone. Send us things. Send us an email at the Amish Inquisition at gmail.com. Correct. Mm. New stories, timestamp thing for us. Yeah, um, you did that, didn't you, Matt? That's sweet. Well, I just said play the whole videos. Oh, yeah, they're only short, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Memes? Send us some I... memes. We like oh, memes. This, in the Discord, there is a meme thread. Oh, is there? People, yeah, for people to post memes. There we go. You yeah. could send us artwork. Yeah, we've yeah. had a couple of doozies in this week, haven't we? Yes. From yeah. uh, Jay Hurst. Yeah. yeah, excellent work. So, producer credit coming your way, Jay, for episode mm-hmm. 188. Yeah, it's mad. Oil paintings. Paints yeah, in oils. really good. Really good. He paints mm-hmm. in oils. <laughs> like a shell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oils himself up and then paints. Rolls around on the canvas. Yeah. Uh, beautiful work. Stunning. It is nice. Very nice. The second one's like a, a digital looking type thing. Was that, was that oil as well? No. <laughs> was it? <laughs> OMG. OMG indeed. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, if you're, uh, well, if you're listening to this, you'll see the artwork for this episode mm. that uh, Jay has produced. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It'll be our, um, be the logo. For the, for the episode, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, anything else? Follow us on social media. Twitter, Instagram are the two main ones. YouTube, subscribe. We have that one. Yeah. We have. Live streams every Sunday, 8 o'clock, mm-hmm. usually, ish. Anything else? Any other way to become a producer? There must be something. Could toss us a fucking coin. <laughs> toss a coin to your witcher. So, oh, Valley of Plenty. Do it for the lads. 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 Me. But we don't get enough uh, monetary donations, and you know the guys from Smooth My Balls will not leave us alone. <laughs> and you know we're gonna have to start doing advertisements. We um, if you yeah. don't support us, we need to um, put our branding on these these streams. Yeah, we were looking us. into that. It's gonna cost like twenty quid a month, probably two hundred forty pound a year. So on top of what everything else already costs. Yeah. So, yes, do support us. The PayPal link is on the uh, website, the com, and mm-hmm. sign up for a monthly or just give us a one off, whatever you think it's worth. If you think it's worth, you know, a fiver every month for four episodes, drops a fiver every month. Yeah, man. Whatever you think it's worth. You might think it's worth 100 quid a month. Yeah. Yeah, you might think it's worth ten thousand pounds a year. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, that would sort the stream <laughs> local would. out, wouldn't it? Why did you not it say would. a month? Well, I, I don't know. I think if someone suddenly gave us ten thousand pounds a month, that there perhaps should be an intervention. <laughs> 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 yeah. Anyway, right, uh, it's me and my balls. We've done them. Shall we thank the producers for episode one hundred and eighty-eight? Yes. I think it's time. It's time to big up the man Dems. Yo. We have Jay Hurst, Gav Scott, Slicko83, Pooley Sketch Chap, Nomi Noznodge, Anonymous, and everyone who bought merch this week. So amazing. They are. Yeah. So amazing in their love. And literally. The best mate. The dwarf. The carrot. The grape. The homophobe. The wind. The asthma. The crop up cunt. The number 11. The blind man. The fallen on the horizon. The cripple and the mother of the. An old friend is here. (laughs) Delightful. (laughs) Don't get it, never will. Yes! Yes, thank you. Thank you for your support for another week. And, uh, you know, don't forget to support us. Those are the standing orders. Read the standing orders. Read them and understand them. Read right. them and support us. Indeed. <sighs> ah!
Happy birthday, Hugh Jones. News. People have got to understand vaccination is going to be, in the end, your route to liberty. The magic vaccine. A big fat shot in the ass. From hell. Oh! You know, it's just, you know, super painful. Like a judgment day and terminating mode like. It's not going to allow us to go completely back to normal. Anal swab tests in the same ballpark as seasonal influenza. Because we're getting bored and we want to have fun. I can't say if you're not wearing a face mask. Read the standing orders. Read them and understand them. Deadly variants or political scarians. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry for comments. I thought it was Henry Kelly. Oh, going for gold. Going for gold. <laughs> Going and going and going and going and going for gold. That was like the height of the European Union, Union propaganda, wasn't it? Was. That game show. I can't remember. I just remember there being something satisfying about the lighting when you built up your lights in, on your podium. Oh, yeah. You, you was that coins, that program? weren't you? Stack your coins. Was that what it was? Oh, no, I don't, I don't know. I can't remember properly. No idea. The heat is on. It was on in the middle of the day, <laughs> wasn't right. it? <laughs> It was on at tea time, weren't it? Was it? Wasn't it? Oh, I don't know. I think it was like straight. If you got home from school early, I think you might have caught it. Yeah. I thought it was like something that was on in the middle of the day because I had a memory of like watching it in the holidays or something. Just reminds you of being ill. (laughs) Yeah. It was good. Um, COVID news. Couple of stats. Stato. 55 COVID deaths this week within 28 days of a positive PCR in the UK. And 42 deaths report to the yellow card system. Oh, wait, we're evening up. Yeah, it's getting close. It's getting close every week. Closer every week. Um, don't read anything into that. It's probably irrelevant. Yeah. Sinovac. The Chinese. Chinese. Yeah, they've approved it for three-year-olds. Right. In Just China. three-year-olds. Just three-year-olds, yeah. <laughs> Three year olds and all, yeah. The Chinese medicines agency they've approved it for three one year olds, (laughs) (laughs) yeah. All right, that's that's the youngest yet, I think. Who's approved it? The Chinese, all right, okay. I don't know what the their equivalent of the uh FDA is. Well, they'll be serving a hell of a lot more people in the FDA Mm. with their their judgment, yeah. Yeah. What's the population? A billion? 1.2, is it? Something? Is it smaller than India? I think... on a par. India's 1.4. They've got. They've had a, a decline in population recently. The, the Chinese government have just approved a third child for, for families now. Yeah, imagine living in a country where the government tells you how many children you can have. <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? Yeah. You wouldn't have them programs on ATV2 where it's my 18th baby and counting... <laughs> Mm, the ends don't justify the means, my friend. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's what Bill Gates wants us to do, isn't it, Dr. Bill? Absolutely, yeah. The Anthropocene. Yes. The disease of the Anthropocene. We'll come on to that later. That's our era, isn't it? Yeah, Apparently, yeah. 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 Humans are a disease on the face of the planet and which must be controlled. Has I reminds me of Matrix watched... 4's being filmed, yes. isn't it? <laughs> I was just about to say, has nobody watched The Matrix? Do you not just realise they're just taking lines from films now? <laughs> it's called predictive programming. Get to the chopper. <laughs> la, 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 la. What's the film? Uh, <laughs> the film with, uh, oh, what's it called? It was in 2012, not Dennis Quaid. Um, he John has a Cusack. sister. Cusack, yeah. John he was Cusack. in a film last year, I believe, about a virus, wasn't he? Oh, I don't and know. Uh, the vaccine was... Um, um, used to control the population, make people infertile, wipe out three generations. Is that Children of Men? Yeah, I was just about to say, that's the plot of Children of Men, isn't it, as well? Is that so. a Cusack film? Uh, no, Don't it's know. Clive Owen. It's old. It's a book, isn't it? That that one was a book. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, do you want some news? Oh, yeah, news. The Dr. Hillary... Richard Madeley's saga has been brewing this week. Oh. I've got three clips, three different days. Cat fight. Yeah. Uh, first clip, Hillary sets the scene here with his unique brand of fear. <laughs> OK, 
out of, of, of this terrible lockdown on the 21st of, of June, do you think? What, what's your gut? You, um, you're an experienced journalist. Well, you, let's, let's not trust it. our gut. Let's trust the doctor, <laughs> Dr Hillary. Well, let me ask a simple question uh, back to you, and that is, why would we ease restrictions when things are getting worse? Does that make any sense to anybody? But are they getting worse, yes, they are. worse in the sense yes. that more people aren't going... Yes, they are. Yes, yeah. yeah. They are getting worse. <laughs> Maitley's pushed out to push back. I could. You know, Pierce was a complete he was, fucking he? lock me down, stamp on me, daddy, tie me up kind of guy. But Maitley, I'm well, getting a newfound respect for him. You'll be on GB News next week, Maitley. If you put two of those back to, sorry, together, Richard Maitley, he looks like he's into like mar ultra marathon running. He's all spindly and shit. And <laughs> um, what's like the biggest uh, correlation with um covid deaths you know like being Age. overweight well whatever the other one being overweight well, yeah obesity is number two i think yeah so and i think piers morgan is obese and he smokes Just cigars going to hospital well we have more cases uh, the week uh, before last but if the cases we don't had... lead to hospitalization well we are seeing hospitalizations we may not be seeing so many we're not seeing that big peak no. in hospitalizations and deaths but we're still having uh, our nh staff work extremely hard to keep hospitalizations down and to keep people from dying uh, icu units are, are pretty busy again and some experts are saying that we're already in a third wave so so my question is why would we ease restrictions right now when things are getting worse when we've got a new variant which is causing huge problems in india but big problems here as well okay so the corollary there. deadly variants or <coughs> political scariants mm. yeah, it brings up the variant I, I like the fact that someone's actually pushing back mm. to a degree on mainstream i mean this is probably the biggest yeah. breakfast show in the country is it not well the second biggest. yeah second. was it after the bbc is it yeah after the big breakfast <laughs> Still watch VHSs. <laughs> uh, number two, Maidley again, becoming the voice of reason. The end times are here upon us. So the idea of mass gatherings, the idea of people abandoning masks and hand sanitising and social distancing seems crazy at a time when things are actually getting worse. But we have government ministers repeatedly now saying over the last, I think probably started 10 days, two weeks ago, and they've said it ever since, that the vaccines, plural, have broken the link between COVID and hospitalizations and death. They've broken the link. Yeah, and and of course they still occur. And that is why. I mean, that was the deal, wasn't it? We should get the uh, <coughs> the vulnerable vaccinated and the old. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, it was three weeks, wasn't it? Three weeks to flatten the curve. <laughs> yeah. Well, we won't have a vaccine for at least eighteen months, two years at best. Mm -hmm. But then we did have a vaccine. Yeah. Okay, and we'll give it to the old people back to normal. Well, hey, but it's deadly variants. Yeah. We need to be a little bit more patient, get everybody vaccinated, and then we can start thinking about easing restrictions. If we do it too early. There's a risk of going back but to re, where but, we were before. But we, 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 had a, we clashed horns about this yesterday morning, and about this time, because what you and people in your camp say, Hillary, is that yeah. actually that delay shouldn't necessarily just be for a couple of weeks or even a couple of months. It might have to run up to Christmas. And I don't think the public are going to wear that. I don't think they will either. No, I don't. The, uh, on the news this morning, people are saying, if we don't open up during this summer, fully mm. we won't open up till next spring <laughs> wow think of all the money i'll save <laughs> who's saying that <laughs> talking heads journalists scientists fucking hell ben what are you gonna buy with your your covid bonanza now you've got a caravan i don't know what's Please next just a speedboat you're gonna complete the the bullseye <laughs> <laughs> main prize <laughs> how am i gonna speedboat jet ski <laughs> Do you not think um, Hillary Mantel, what's his name? That's Hillary. <laughs> is, um, is he on that kind of thinking? And he didn't say this, but he probably should have done. Is he thinking that, well, it's fine. Yeah, okay. We, we got these, these increasing cases, but it's not leading to hospitalization or death. But if, is he concerned that if it's left rampant, it might lead to, uh, more mutations that aren't that you know aren't potentially counteracted by the current set of vaccines no 
You never mentioned mut- mutated. Ma- you didn't mention any of that, but I mean, th- that's the only logical thing I can think of where he might be coming from to to argue against what um, Maidley was saying. Then, if you won't open up, and I said this to Matt, I think last week, when it regards foreign travel, if you won't mu- open up because you're afraid of a mutation that will evade the vaccine, yeah, mm-hmm. you never open it up. Never ever. No. No. And the the only. Well, the only thing you can do if you were to open up would be to just have constant new vaccines every three months or so. Cha-ching! Cha-ching. Boosters oh. every every season. Can you imagine if we just sort of protected the old back in March 2020? What might have happened? We'd all be immune. Yeah. And we'd have a vaccine for the old. Yeah. Half a million people would have died. Half a million people did die, didn't they? I don't know how many died here. No. No, the uh, you remember the when we got that WhatsApp message with the Imperial Ferguson's mm. forecast of half a million deaths and everyone shit the bed? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, that same um, model did a model for Sweden as well. Mm. Yeah, it didn't turn out, did it? It didn't happen. How are Sweden doing now? A lot right. better than us. Better result. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, less deaths per million. Right. Why were we so shit? Are we not just ill here as well? Are we we have a, hell? Yeah, we have, we're probably after America. We're probably the most unhealthy country on the planet. Sick man of Europe. Yeah, mm-hmm. literally. We've been there. Uh, Plus, um, sending people with COVID into nursing homes probably wasn't the best idea. Mm. I'm pretty, didn't that happen in Sweden though? Yeah. Well? Yeah, they fucked that up as well. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Hillary, clip three. Uh, I just want this, this will show you how out of touch this douchebag is, Dr. Hillary. Just check this out. You know, I, I'm in favour on the 21st of June of selective easing of restrictions. It's, you know, there's a big. It's starting to roll back a bit, I think. Big difference between going to a restaurant where. Restaurant. <laughs> it's French word. The business is very careful to, for people to wear masks as they go to their they table, down sit the table down, afterwards. And, and there's a small group of people uh, that know each other having a nice lunch and, and, a, and a glass of wine. Big difference between that and 200 people dancing in a nightclub with no ventilation. Cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, so selective easing, I'm in favour. I want businesses to get back. I want people to get back to normal and it's good for their mental health. I know that. I don't want to be Dr. Killjoy. But we have like. rising numbers of cases. We don't know how long vaccination is effective for. There will be other variants. You now, know, remembering the top floor of the warehouse and how the ceiling used to drip onto you yeah. <laughs> throughout the night. Be, that was just I, I kind of dry see where he's going from. <laughs> Who has wine with lunch? <laughs> Your piece. People like this. <laughs> exactly, yeah. In their little media bubble. Mm. And it's completely out of touch. Mm. You know, where, when we were in the warehouse, dripping with sweat, at 18 years old. Uh, yeah, and yeah. and later. How often did we go into nursing homes? To dance. <laughs> For any reason. Well, no, never. I don't think I've ever been in a nursing home. No. What's wrong? I went to a post office, so there's lots of old people there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. That was it. That was the Hillary thing. I think he is. I think he's just set out his stall and he's having to just def- kind of stick to it, isn't he? Yeah. Well, it's a question of personal gain. He gains from this dragging oh, yeah. on forever. Yeah. We talked the other a couple of weeks ago about him going on his luxury Cunard cruise where he's been paid as a speaker, professional speaker. Mm. You know, this is great for his profile. This is what I was saying about scientists who don't Same normally get that. Mm-hmm. Uh, exposure yeah yeah the book deals will be being done it's like crack for him they can't they can't get enough of it uh are you suggesting that these <laughs> are they are they disingenuous then do you think no scientists are completely full of integrity to the brim mm-hmm. so are they doing it for the money then or not i have no idea well, i'm asking you to speculate <laughs> yes yes and maybe no. <laughs> the other thing is the confirmation bias, isn't it? Like, so, you know, if you think something, then 
um, you'll do anything to prove it, won't you? Essentially. There's lots of ways to do that with stats and stuff. Yeah, you can make stats say whatever you want. That's the that's the beauty of them. They they should be above that, for fuck's sake. They should be. Well, they're not though, are they? And the other thing, well, you know, feeds into the... that. Yeah. Sorry, go on. No. I was just going to say, you know, the other, just the fact that you... Um, I don't know, I've lost, I've lost Maybe this is why government should employ a wider range of advisors then. If they if they're so yeah. if they're so uh, vulnerable to this kind of groupthink, then maybe they should be widening their net as far as what advice they get. Yeah. Do you what do you think of Neil Ferguson? Because he was persona non grata in know. the early days. And now he's like you know, he's he's constantly on the on the the teats of doom. Well, yeah. All press is good press, Ben. Exactly, and I think he's lapping it up. Mm. Yeah. Oh, know. hey, what's going on here? You were what's right, that? Matt. What? Is he turned up at nine? No, he's turned, up, he's turned up at 20 past nine, yeah. Oh, God. We, we, we're, we're streaming, we're... by the way. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, this has never happened before. No. no. Shall we just go with it? Just a bit late, isn't it, to be starting? Yeah. yeah. I think oh. just going to say sorry and go again. <laughs> what? It's just come to say sorry. I'm late. Um, can we rearrange? <laughs> <laughs> I had a personal tragedy. I don't know what to do. What about all our? There's like three thousand people watching on there on the streaming. <laughs> really? No, there's not. <laughs> Oh man, shall I stop the stream then? Yeah. That stopped?